Hi! So, it was really, really nice to have such amazing feedback from my plant tour video. I am so pleased you guys enjoyed looking at all of my different house plants and didn't think I was too crazy. And it was really good to hear all of your questions and hopefully I answered all of those for you and enabled you guys to go and get a million house plants of your own because I'm not even sorry if that's what you want to do. Anyway, today I was asked by my pal Nikki how to propagate pillars and Pilia peperomoides are a really popular plant at the moment. A few years ago when I got mine they just kind of were unheard of I guess or they weren't you know they definitely weren't the kind of it plant that they are now but I got mine like I said in my previous video from a charity shop on the Isle of Wight for like a pound and it had like two leaves or something and now it's grown massive I've propagated it a million times and today it's ready to be propagated again because there are a few babies that um, are big enough to cut off. So Nikki asked how to propagate them, you guys ask me all the time and so I thought I'd share a video. It's really really quick, it's really straightforward and takes no time at all. So I'm going to show you how to do that now and then hopefully you guys can, if you have pillars of your own, snip the babies off, propagate them, give them to pals. Um, <laughs> the one I gave to Nikki, she's gonna propagate and give it to some of her pals and she's hashtagging it Pillia Pay It Forward, which I think is really cool. Um, and if you know someone that has a Pillia and you don't have one and you want one, then maybe ask really nicely if they might be able to propagate it so you can have one. Or even suggest that you can help them propagate it if you've watched this video. So basically just spread the love really um, and everybody can have more plants. But yeah, I'm gonna show you how to do that now and then um, let me know how you get on. All you need to do is take your pillia. This guy is the first one I ever got. He's really big um, and long and windy, but he also has all of these babies. Um, this guy's massive. Uh, there's a little one here and another baby here. Um, and those guys are ready to come off basically. Um, so I don't know if you can see, I'll take this little crystal out. Um, here, that's the kind of size of them. This one's really big. And then these guys are a little bit smaller. Um, so all you need is a sharp knife. <laughs> Doesn't have to be green to match your plants, but this is just one of our crappy kitchen knives. Um, and then some pots um, or little jars, excuse my nails, <laughs> to put your um, cuttings in. So these little spice jars are fine. You can literally use like plastic hummus containers that you've washed out, anything like that. Um, these are little science beakers that I also quite like. Um, so I've just got a few here. Ignore the fact that this one's covered in algae. But this one's really, really good um, for rooting things because it's got like a narrow neck. Um, test tubes would be really good too. Anyway, all you need to do is... It's hard to show you because there's so much leaf going on here. But just kind of dig away at the soil a little bit around it. So you can kind of see how the roots are forming and if there are any, there are lots on this one. Loosen it up a bit, like this. I can kind of feel that this guy has got some roots. So I'm just um, loosening the soil around it. And then if I zoom in, you might be able to see a bit better. And then once I've kind of got some of its roots. I am going to take my sharp knife um, and just slice it at the stem. Like that. It's really easy. Um, so now I have this guy. Um, you can kind of see here. That's where I've sliced it off uh, and, and it's got some roots on it there already. So I'm just going to shake the excess soil off of him. Don't worry if a few um, of the more delicate roots do fall off whilst you're doing this. Um, but yeah, try and get any excess soil off that you can. And then literally just pop him in some water like this. Make sure his roots are in as well. So that one's ready to go. And I'm just going to do this little guy. So don't take any um, if they're, they're too small. So 
this guy here, if you can see him, um, is a basil shoot, so he's going to be a little plant pillia, but he's only got, like, well, no leaves yet. Um, this guy is also probably a little bit too small here. Um, I would want to wait for him to get a bit bigger before I pluck him off because he'll have a better chance of um, surviving, really. Um, and then these two I'm going to take off because they're really big <laughs> and they definitely need to come off this plant. So again, I'm just going to pluck off um, any kind of leaves that look a little bit unhealthy, like this guy. Um, get them out my way. He'll shoot out lots of new leaves. Um, there's a tiny, tiny baby in here. If you can see him, he's got one leaf, so I'm definitely going to leave him. And then I'm just going to do, carefully so I don't damage the mother plant, I'm just going to, again, dig around in the soil just a little bit. Um, I'm actually using a mixture of soil in here um, and a kind of hydroponic-y substrate. It's called... Um, Lechuza pond. It's the soil that you can buy to use with the Lechuza self-watering planters uh, that I talked about in my last plant video. Um, and it's really, really good because it's got food in it for the plants. Um, and because it's this kind of gravelly texture, it's quite easy to uh, dig around in. But you don't have to use it at all. Pillias aren't fussy. Um, you could use any kind of normal potting compost. Okay, so I've loosened it up a little bit. I'm just going to take the knife, find the base, and just stab it in really, very gently so I don't damage any potential um, roots from the mother plant. And then gently ease it out. Yeah. There you go. So. Oop, tangled up here. I've taken these guys out. I, I actually did decide to take this one out, even though he's too small really um, for my liking, but he was sitting directly under the stem here and being squashed, so he's got like a flattened top. Now, I don't know if he's gonna survive, but he's got a massive root system there. So, you know, hopefully he will. Uh, but basically, yeah, this was just to kind of show you the size um, of them that you can propagate. So this guy's been, uh, <laughs> growing for a while he's really big this guy is probably the size i would say you should really take them at it's the easiest to kind of pluck them out um, and they're still like good healthy sized leaves um, and doing well so like i said before i'm just going to clean the roots off um just gently it doesn't really matter if you get mud in the water um, and then i'm gonna pop them in the jar um, that one still needs filling with some water. Um, clean this guy off because he's got lots of roots. Um, you can actually use a really soft um, toothbrush for this, like a baby toothbrush, um, if you're worried about being a bit too heavy handed. But I normally just go for it with my hands. Um, you can kind of see here, all the roots sprout out of the side. Actually quite a thick stem. It's hard to kind of show you, but the stem that's this thick goes all the way down past the roots to the point where I've uh, sliced it. Um, and you want to use a sharp knife so that it's a clean cut, so that it minimises the risk of, you know, any bacteria kind of getting in and the plant getting diseased. I'm actually going to grab a slightly bigger pot to put this one in, um, because I can't squeeze it through the neck of that without damaging the roots. And then we're done. I managed to find... Um, Oops, <laughs> um, just like a little weck jar. They're quite good for this sort of thing. I'm gonna pop them in. The good thing um, about using a glass jar um, is that it's got its own kind of weight to it. So if you use plastic, you just gotta be careful that it's not gonna topple over and spill water everywhere, basically. Okay, so once you have your happy mama pillia um, with a nice clean soil area except for any tiny babies you couldn't snip off. That's good to go. I'm gonna put it back up here because that's where it lives. Um, and then these guys that you have in your containers um, in water, they, I'd say play it by ear. There isn't like a general um, 
rule for how long you have to leave them like this but I always think it's better to get them going in water get them rooted before you put them in soil rather than putting them straight into soil because um, it kind of allows you to sense check their progress really and, and have a little look at their health if they're sprouting new leaves they're growing loads of roots you've got a good system of uh, roots in your water which make sure you change every three or four days just to keep it fresh and make sure it's above the line of the roots or the stem if there is no roots it's not a big deal if there isn't um but don't have the leaves in water so keep that water clean leave them in there and then i would just play it by ear once you've got a good load of roots there and it looks like it's healthy then i'd say it's time to pop it in soil but like i said there isn't a rule it's not like two days or two weeks or two months like they will quite happily be in here until you deem them ready to go in soil really. So just keep a little eye on them and by all means if you do propagate them from this video like share them with me on Instagram or on Twitter like I really do love to see your snaps of your plants I'm that sad I love enjoying everybody else's plants too. Tag me I'm hashtag ONR shop or just at me I'm at ONR shop as well really easy um, but yeah it'd be really nice to see them so hopefully you guys get on well don't worry too much about it they're pretty hardy just get stuck in and uh, see how you get on any other plant care videos you want to see about propagation or pests or anything like that hit me up in the comments and I'll do my best to film a little short video like this for you otherwise yeah thanks for watching and I'll see you soon bye yeah.